Hey guys, it's Nick here. Um, I just got back from Seattle at the game store. I bought three games. Um, I didn't buy a console. Everything's too expensive. I thought that PC mobile thing, that's what it's called. I thought it was 40 bucks, but it's 50. I didn't have enough money. But I did pick myself up three games. One's a Nintendo Wii game, and of course the other two are NES. So, there we go. Like that. Um, first game I got today was... House of the Dead Overkill. I like the first game. I saw this one. It looked great. I want to play the Carnival level. Reminds me a lot of Carnival. They're both real shooters taking place at the Carnival. The second one, I actually never played this one before, but I've seen videos of it. And you know how I like AD&D. This is Swords and Serpents. And the third one, it's Torture. I'm sorry, I have um, family members over here. But, um, for them, so, let's why the noise here. But this game... You're going to want to shield your eyes for this one. I don't think you guys can take, take it. And I know. I'm probably the stupidest person in the world, literally, to buy this game for $10. But I was a fool. I bought it. I bought this thing. And, you know, are you ready to see what it is? Because I don't think you guys are ready. Okay. Well, here you go. That's right. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle and Friends. We both know, or we all know, how good this game is. Yes. We know how good this is. And I paid $10 for it. Complete inbox. This thing. This is the best game ever. You know what? Screw Mario. Screw Friday the 13th. You know what? Jason can kill me if you want. This game is awesome. You Every, oh, what's that? You don't like it? Well, you know what? Fuck you, because this game is my favorite game. Screw full of ratings. This is the best game ever. Okay, of course I'm just being sarcastic. This is actually one of the worst games I've ever played. And I should tell it, I'm Batman. And, you know, uh, my piano was open. I could do a glass breaking sound. But, no, uh, anyways, um, uh, okay, I'm not I'm not gonna say you know it's the worst game in the world, but, but I don't think they put much effort into the game. But you know I got it because it's like you know what it's rare. This is actually the first time I actually saw this game in the flesh. Um, well, unless you're talking about the Super Nintendo, Game Boy, and Genesis versions that it was also released for them. So yeah, guys, sorry I didn't buy a console, but you know. Since I'm going to try getting a job anyways, you know, I can earn money to buy consoles and stuff. So, um, uh, and I don't think my top loader is really worth it of putting this game in. Like I said, this game, the, my top loader NES is royalty to me. It's like, it's like a freaking child to me, like an actual, literally, child. I, I treat it like it's my baby. I, I make sure nothing bad happens to it, you know. God, if it fell, I would take it to the hospital probably, but no, okay, I'm just joking. But still, I like that, that top loader. This game is definitely not worthy of it. As for Swords and Serpents, I'd say sure, from based on what I've seen, and the awesome music from George Sanger, the American Koji Kondo, in my opinion, because you know he's produced or he's made, he's composed several game music. Like um, he did Home Alone for the NES. He did. And then for PC, it is Seventh Guest, Eleventh Hour, I think it's called. Um, and, you know, he did this game. He did Dick Tracy, I know, a bad name. I believe he did Maniac Mansion for the NES, the NES version of it. And, gosh, tons of other games I could go on and on. Now, actually, if you look on his site, he has some of the many titles that he's on music for. From what I heard, I heard he did, like, over, like, 800 games or something like that. Um, so that's actually a pretty good deal. So, I mean, but yeah, as for Home Alone, yeah, he wrote this game's music too, like I said. Um, so anyways, I would like to stay in chat, but I am just that desperate to play House of the Dead Overkill. I want to play it so badly now, and you know, my sister's friend, Noah, he's probably going to come over, and you know, he, he liked House of the Dead 3, and we almost beat it. I mean, I got to the final boss, I could not beat it, so it's like, you know what, I'm just going to watch the endings on YouTube, and that's what I did. Um, but this one, actually, I heard this game used the most swear words, and, and what's surprising is the the guy, one of the guys, Isaac Washington. He's he's he likes swears in every line. Like, I tried my motherfucking best to impress you. I I don't really remember what he said, but I know he swears in almost every single line. 
But no. Yeah. This game cost me twenty bucks. It was stupid though. They had to look at my dad's ID card to make sure you know he was old enough to play the game. And it's like, are you kidding? He he's his hair is gray. Okay, it's black and gray. And you know he's like really tall. He's you know. I mean you can even tell he's old if you looked at him. And they still have to do that. I mean I I know I, I it's I know it's kind of like a lot, but come on. If you see something like that, it's like you know the guy's more than old enough. Um, you know. Then two years, or actually next year, when it, my next birthday, it won't matter because I will be 17. I don't know if you see that that well, but it says 17 plus. But I'll be 17 and I'll be able to play those games. You know, actually, I've seen a rating called um, AO, adults only, for 18 year olds and older, but I've never seen a game with that rating. I've only seen a list of what ratings are there, or, but I've never seen the AO rating on any game at all. If you guys know one, please post them in your comments or something, because I've never seen a game that has that rating. So, and you know, from what I heard, Night Trap, the game, Night Trap started the ESRB. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I've heard. So, I was going to say, I, I was thinking about it, that little Red Hood game for the NES, you guys think that game's bad? Play Rocky and Bullwinkle and see which one's better. But I bet you, I bet you're going to be coming back saying, "Oh, at least in Little Red Running Hood, I mean, at least it's possible to do this and that." In Rocky and Bullwinkle, we can't get anywhere. Um, I'm actually going to show you something not many people know about in that game um, when I do a, my video of it. Unfortunately, my NES, my top loader, is going to have to take the, the damage. It's going to get scarred for life with that game. It's going to get scarred. For and it's not going to be a beautiful sight. But I'm going to have to see my baby take the damage. Okay, no. Yeah, I, my, my NES is going to have to deal with this thing. But you know what? I think that's helpful for NES. like, you know what? I will take that thing, and I will... I'm going to take that. Because I'm going to take that rocking bowling with cartridge and shove it in that top loader. And I'm going to play that thing. I'm going to play that thing. You guys are going to see it. Okay, so, um, yeah. <sighs> But honestly, I don't think that game's worthy of my of my NES. It's like Steve Wilkos, you know. It's like you think you should be on my stage, get on my stage. That's how I reacted about my NES. It's like my top loader. It's like you think, you know. I, I look at this game. I know it's like you think you're worthy to be played on my top loader. Get the heck out of my room. And you know, do the glass breaking sound stuff. Um, but anyways, so yep, just stay tuned and you will see a video of those games. Um, so peace out. Hopefully I'll do one of Overkill, but I think I'm gonna have to use my iPod camera for that one.